Hi everybody, welcome to today's sermon. Yes, a warm welcome to everybody. What a wonderful um, opportunity it is for us to be able to come together like this, even when we are pushed a little bit outside of our comfort zone and um, we have our first couple of days of, of lockdown behind us and trust that you guys are all settling in nicely into your, into your different routines together with your family and your, and your loved ones. Um, our hearts, of course, go out specifically today to those of you guys who um, maybe are going through this time um, by yourself and you are in lockdown mode uh, as an individual and you don't have family or you don't have friends with you in the house, please be assured of our, our prayers for you specifically. I want to encourage you to, um, to reach out to, to those around you, those that you know, um, via WhatsApp, uh, phone call, SMS. Please don't, uh, don't allow the devil to lie to you at this time that you are alone and that you are isolated. Allow us as your friends and as the body of Christ to come alongside you and to support you uh, through this time. I've had the wonderful privilege of, of traveling for these last um, couple of months to different parts of our Shofar family. I've been to George and to Bloemfontein, visited uh, Shofar uh, Zanin and uh, Polo Kwane. A couple of weeks ago, joined them for their family camp. We had the wonderful opportunity also to camp together at Shofar Summers the West and Shofar Hermanas. Um, I was also up in uh, Pretoria with Shofar Pretoria and uh, just so incredibly blessed by what I'm seeing, what I'm observing, the tremendous love which the Shofar family have for each other and have for the Word of God and for the presence of God. And um, we are so blessed and so privileged to be part of an amazing uh, part of the body of Christ. And um, I want to, to thank you for allowing us to, to shepherd you, for allowing us as the apostolic team together with the local pastors and elders to lead you and to, to journey with you during this time. And um, I'm going to remind you of uh, our Global Praying Fast that we had a couple of, um, couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago. I can't even remember. So much has happened over these last few, few weeks. Literally, our, our lives have, have changed. Our lives have been radically transformed. And, um, and during that time, uh, the Lord spoke to us uh, from two portions of Scripture. The one was from the Old Testament and centered around the sons of Issachar. Uh, the tribe of Issachar came together around David. And uh, the word says that uh, the sons of Issachar, they had understanding of the times. and They knew what they had to do. And so we, we prayed into that a little bit and trusted God to just lead us in uh, understanding the times in which we live. And then we tied that together with Jesus' command for us, or his summary for us of what are the two most important commandments. In other words, the two most important priorities from God's perspective. And that was to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength. And I feel that during this time, it is so important to, to remember that, that God hasn't left us um, uh, without a plan. He hasn't left us uh, to be caught by surprise by the, uh, the crisis in which the whole world and our country finds itself, but He has been preparing us and He's wanting to lead us into a time of understanding the season in which we find ourselves. And from His perspective, I believe God is giving us an invitation, um, giving us an invitation to really begin to just think and to reflect on what does it mean to, to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength. And I want to encourage us all. You know, we have so many amazing videos, so many amazing resources on the internet. Um, it is incredible to see how, how uh, words are being shared and how we are encouraging each other. And, um, and that's incredible. That is so, so valuable and so precious. But I do want to um, ask us during this time to, to make use of the opportunity that we have to become uh, quiet, uh, to make use of the opportunity to assess and to think about how am I loving the Lord my God? How am I loving Him? So 
when the band isn't there, when the pastor bringing the sermon isn't there, when we don't have the uh, welcome team, we don't have the children's church volunteers, what does it mean for me as an individual to love the Lord my God? And not with the band strength, not with the, um, the kids' church volunteers' strength, not with the elders' strength, uh, nobody else's strength, but with all of my strength. Uh, what does that look like for me? Uh, when I bring all of my strength, when I bring all of my heart, and I bring all of my soul, and I bring all of my mind to loving God. And uh, we have, have started this, this WhatsApp group, just a communication group between the different intercession champions of the various congregations. And it has been so phenomenal to, to see the golden thread that is coming through all of the words being shared as different congregations are praying together. And that really is a God is calling us aside bring us back to a place where we can reconnect with him. And so the time that we would have used to, to go jogging or to playing golf or doing any extramural activity outside of the house, beautiful, wonderful, uh, God-given things, uh, the time we used to spend on those things, and those things aren't there anymore. And even with our spiritual activities, when those things have been, been put in the back burner a little bit, it's for us to just come back and to look at, all right, Jesus, how am I loving you? What's the condition of my heart? And there's, there's no mediator between you and me anymore. Uh, there's no one through whom I can live my Christianity. There's no one through whom I can receive my spiritual input and food as important and as valuable as it is. But you have always desired me to have a relationship with you, a personal relationship. And that we would continue to this journey, journal, reflect, read, uh, a, a voice record your, your, your times with the Lord during, during this, this season. And, and then also to think about uh, what does it look like to love my neighbor as myself? And for us as families, obviously our neighbor right now is the people um, that's with us in, in the house. So how am I going to love Annika as myself? How am I going to love my children? How am I going to love my, my wife as, as myself and, and be prepared also for us to discover some things about ourselves during this time, discover some things about one another during this time. We, as a family, as we're just journeying through John, we were talking about the Word of God and the Word that has been with God from the very beginning. And if we want to know God, we need to know His Word. And so if, if I want to know Annika, then I need to spend time with Annika. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, a lot of dates at, at home, and I need to, to listen to her. I need to, to switch off from other things, and I need to listen to her. And we have some wonderful opportunities now to learn to listen to one another again. And I feel for us as dads, specifically dads, maybe just a word to all of us, uh, let's embrace this opportunity to trust the Lord, to open our ears to hear, to really hear what our wives are saying, to really hear what our children are saying. And to record that, to listen to that, and to really engage with them around that. We might not have this opportunity again with so few distractions. So let's be intentional around just learning how to love our neighbor and also just to pray into, all right, God, so help us to love those outside of our home. Help us to love those who are uh, on the other side of the fence. Help us to love those at our school during this time, uh, right now where we are presently, but also for going forward uh, to, to think and to write down ideas, to brainstorm some ideas as a family, as a small group, as individuals. How can we practically demonstrate God's love uh, during this time that is, that is so needed and where we are all much more aware of the fact that we are connected together. So again, for me, just simply, and I trust in the Lord, I said, God, what do I say to your people? And I really feel that the Lord is uh, wanting us to, slow down. He's wanting us not now when we have this opportunity to spend a lot of time reading prophecies, reading words, listening to podcasts, listening to a lot of good things that are going on there. Let's not again just substitute one form of activity with another. Let's really slow down. Let's really go back to the words God has given us. And let's understand the time to which we have come. And the time to which we have come is a time to love God to love our neighbors as ourselves. Everything hinges on that. All of the activities, everything God has called us to do hinges on the pillar of love. 
loving God, our vertical relationship, loving those around us, our horizontal relationship. With that as the backdrop, I want to share a few thoughts with you from Jeremiah 29, a well-known chapter. It's a, it's a chapter that all of us have read many times, I believe, and specifically Jeremiah 29, 11, which I know many of us have read and we have given to one another as encouragement. And I shared this word um, at a wedding which we recently uh, had the privilege of officiating. And I want to share this word with us as a family as well. It's, it's a letter that Jeremiah writes from Jerusalem. He writes to those who have been carried off during the first uh, 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 batch of exiles that were taken by King Nebuchadnezzar from Jerusalem. And so the Israelites find themselves in a place where they are in exile, a place where they have been removed from the temple, they've been removed from the city, that they've known the, the center of their religious life, the center of everything that they've been used to traditionally, culturally, um, all of that has been uprooted. They've been taken away from that. And the reason why they were taken away from that is because for a very long time, even though they've had the center, they've had the building, they've had the sacrifices and everything that went along with that, their hearts have actually drifted from true worship of God. And so now God allows them to be taken away from that place so they can reconnect with him again. They can reconnect with who God truly is and who God has called them to be. And so Jeremiah writes this letter to them. We're going to pick up the story in Jeremiah 29, verse, verse 4. I don't know if you can read for us. Verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Yes. So the first thing we need to notice there is that God is saying, you were carried away captive by Nebuchadnezzar. But remember, Nebuchadnezzar is simply an earthly king under my command. And so God says that I've caused you to be carried away captive. And I want to encourage us to be rooted during this time in the sovereignty of God, that as this, this virus has come upon the earth, as um, a lot of upheaval is taking place, that God is still busy with a bigger picture. God is still busy with his sovereign plan to see to it that his bride is without spot and without wrinkle. And if we are surrendered to God, then his agenda, his purpose, his plan for humanity, but especially for his bride, is being accomplished during this time. So let us surrender as difficult as it might be as the walls become too small as the physical space become too small let us surrender from a heart of hearts to God's plan say God I'm surrendering to what you are busy doing have your way with my life even this this time of exile this time of discomfort this time of being separated from that which I know and which I'm comfortable with I'm surrendering to your purpose for the season in my life verse 5 build houses and dwell in them Plant garden, gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives from your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. Yes. And so here, yeah, um, God comes and he says to the exiles, I know you are in exile, and I know that right now you might be tempted to to blame one another for the reason that you are in exile. I know that you might be tempted to blame Nebuchadnezzar, to blame the former kings who were definitely disobedient, to blame your nobles, to blame yourselves. Um, and, and maybe you have fallen into a spirit of regret, uh, just looking back, or maybe you're just looking forward and you can't wait to get back home again. And he says to them, I want you to be anchored in the present. I want you to not be uh, uh, trapped within a cycle of blame. I want you not to be trapped within an airy-fairy expectation concerning the future, the what-ifs and the what should be or what could have been. I want you right now where you are at to build. It says build. Uh, build houses for yourselves and live in them. And so uh, this is what I feel in my heart God is saying to all of us as well. Let's build again. Let's use this time, these, these, these three weeks, 
that we have, maybe longer, maybe shorter, let's use this time to build and to understand that we have the opportunity now to assess again, how am I building? Here in this land where I'm in, here in my house, how am I building? Am I building upon the rock? What have I been using to build my spiritual life, the spiritual life of my family, for my calling, for my career? What have I been using to build upon? What is, what is the foundation of my life? And scripture says the only foundation that is going to outlast the storms and the testings and the challenges and the shaking that's taking place, the only foundation, and we know this, but I think right now we really know this, is the Word of God. And let's, let's assess, am I just saying it? Am I just singing it? Or am I really building upon the Word? And if I'm not, then it's simply just an opportunity to come back and say, Father, I'm going to reconnect with your Word I want to build my life upon your word. I want to have your word live in my heart. I want to have it live in my mind. And I want it to come out of my mouth. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to build again. To build, and then he says, but also live in it. And so again, let's be present. I believe that this is an invitation for us to be present, fully rooted. And so if we are home, to be fully home. And we're going to have some challenges in terms of how we balance the word that we bring into our home. Let's be intentional around that, have specific hours where we work, but specific hours where we engage with those around us during this time. But let's build and let's live in the houses God has given us. Let's not live in a house where we hope we, 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 we could have been or a house where we should have been or be discontent with what we have, but let's embrace the spirit of contentment. Let's embrace where we are at right now. And secondly, he says there, plant gardens and eat the fruit. God calls us to build our lives upon the rock that is his word, to bring ourselves as living stones before him, to, to live with the living stones around us with sensitivity, to appreciate them. And then he calls us to plant gardens and eat the fruit. And that means simply God wants us to be productive. Have an expectation during this time that you can bear fruit. And the fruit right now isn't the fruit that will catch the applause of people on the outside, which is often what we live for. How often aren't we driven at school to, to live for the fruit of others or to live for fruit that others will recognize? Our entire system of life is geared around celebrating visible public fruit. But now I believe God is asking us to evaluate the private fruit of our lives. Be fruitful. Plant gardens. Be fruitful. Cultivate the fruit of the Spirit again which is often not celebrated in the world, but which is celebrated by heaven and fruit which will have lasting impact. So let's evaluate the fruit of the Spirit. If this is what truly blesses and pleases God, how's my love, my joy, my peace, my patience, my gentleness, my kindness, the goodness in my heart, the, the faith, how are those things to evaluate them and to bring them back to the place of understanding that if I'm going to be fruitful, not just for a day, but if I'm going to have lasting fruit that my children will be able to eat from and my colleagues will be able to eat from, my neighbors will be able to eat from. The only way I can bear that fruit is by being planted next to the river, next to the river of God's presence, of His Holy Spirit and of His Word. Psalm 1 encourages us that we will be like the tree planted by the river. And so for myself, I'm looking again, am I planted? What is the river that's feeding my garden? What is the river that's feeding the tree of my personal fruit? And not to blame any other river, any other person, any other influence, but simply to say, God, I'm taking responsibility for the fruit in my life. And I want to eat of this fruit, and I want those around us to eat of that fruit as well. It reminds me of, of the, the tree in Genesis, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Two trees, and God wants us to eat from the tree of life. life. Eat from the tree of life. So during this time, guys, we plant um, fruit. Let's make use of this opportunity. Am I eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? In other words, am I holding stuff against people? Am I harboring fruit? Am I nurturing fruit of resentment, fruit of blame, fruit of unforgiveness? Uh, those things become acidic and they poison our souls. Am I choosing to eat from the tree of life, the tree of forgiveness, the tree that says that as mercy has been given to me, 
I'm going to extend mercy. So let's evaluate our fruit. Let's be planted next to the river, spend time in the presence of God, spend time in worship, spend time in the Word, so that lasting fruit can come out of our lives. And when this, 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 this curfew, this uh, lockdown is lifted, we can come out and go into the world bearing good fruit that others will be able to taste and see that God is good during this time. The uh, third part of the verse says, give your children to be married. Marry and give your children to be married. I believe this just speaks about a legacy. Let's trust God during this time to dream again about a legacy, to understand that God wants us he has to build houses, to live in them. He wants us to bear fruit and to enjoy that fruit and to share that fruit with others. But he's also wanting us to be reproducing. Now let's think about, Father, you have called me as a, as a physical dad to disciple my children. And I'm coming back again as parents. Maybe I'm a single dad or a single mom. Maybe I'm an older brother, older sister having to look after my siblings. And I'm coming again and I'm saying, God, I'm taking responsibility. And I'm taking ownership of the wife and the sons and the daughters that you have given me. I'm taking ownership of that responsibility to steward them, to disciple them, to love them, to invest in them. A wonderful opportunity for us during this time as well, maybe just to make a list of our extended family members and think about when was the last time we had contact with them. Send them messages, send them a voice note, better yet phone them, and just reconnect with them. Let's connect with those God has given us, our physical family. Because so often we are so busy at work and we are so busy even with our spiritual family and activities that maybe this is a good time for us to reconnect with our physical families as well. God gives us both to enjoy our physical as well as our spiritual families. And it doesn't have to be a choice. You don't have to play the one off against the other one. But we have the time now to evaluate what are my relationships like within my physical family and my spiritual family? Am I living as a son, as a daughter in the house of God? Or am I living as a stranger? And if I am, what can I do to change that? I remember many years ago coming into Shofar and, and uh, as a student in Stellenbosch and, and God just challenged me right from the beginning and said, Heinrich, you will only feel as close to this family as you choose to be. The choice is yours. You can choose to be planted. You can choose to be connected. You can choose to be a stranger. And it changed my life. And it's my prayer that each one of us will, during this time, make the decision in our hearts to say, I choose to be family. I choose to be part of the body of Christ and this local community that can love each other and care for each other. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For it, for in its peace you will have peace. For in its peace you will have peace. Such a beautiful, powerful scripture. So as we, we build our, uh, our homes and we live in them, as we plant our gardens, we eat its fruit, as we uh, reprioritize around family and, and our hearts, let's continue to pray for our cities. Pray for your town. Um, the wonderful thing about the internet is we can go and Google and see who's the mayor of our town, who are the, the local municipality members, who are the people, the police chief, who are the, the, um, the guys in, in influence. Pray for them. Let's pray for the towns where God has placed us, the cities where God has placed us. And he calls the Israelites and he says to them, pray for Babylon. Pray for that city where you feel you're being held captive. Let's continue to pray for our president. Let's continue to, to pray for those who influence over us. Something monumental has happened over these last few days. Our president has stepped up as a leader and as he has brought our nation before the Lord and has called for prayer. Let's agree with him. Let's thank God for the president and the ministers that he has given us. And let's stand in faith that he will continue to raise up many more men and women of integrity and pray for the peace of our country. But specifically, there where you are, pray for the peace of your city, embrace your city. My prayer is that none of us will live with one foot here and one foot back in Jerusalem, so to speak. But that we would say, Father, I thank you for planting me here in Somerset West, planting me in Secunda, planting me wherever God has planted here. I'm gonna pray for this city, for your peace to rest and to dwell here. For thus says the Lord, 
After 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Hallelujah. There's the beautiful promise. And God says, remember this, that when 70 years are completed, when my purpose, my time frame, my divine schedule is completed, I will bring you back. I will fulfill my purpose for your life. Let's rest in this, in the knowledge that ultimately, it doesn't matter what happens, it doesn't matter what anybody decides, what anybody does, it doesn't even matter what happens to us physically, that God's plans for us are good. His plans for us is to give us a hope and to give us a future. Let's trust in His plans. And His plans are the plans that will triumph. At the end of the day, Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus and all of the earthly kings were simply instruments in God's hands to fulfill His purpose. And with all the things that we are doing at this time, let's make this promise our own. His thoughts towards us are good thoughts and not of evil. Let's refuse any lie towards the character of God and let's believe his character that he is a good God. And let's seek him. And this word says that we will find him when we seek him with all of our hearts. So again, my encouragement to us is this. Let's not become so obsessed with the news, even with all the amazing Facebook messages, WhatsApp messages that are doing the rounds, that are encouraging and that, that, that people are sending around. They, they can be good. But let us not allow that to prevent us, me, I myself, from seeking God with all of my heart. That this um, lockdown period would be a period, when I look back on that in my life, I will say that was the time when I sought the Lord. And I know that when I see God, I will find Him. And so He is our reward. And it's actually an invitation for us not to, not to go into survival mode, but to know that he has prepared a table for us during this time, a table where we can feast on his goodness and his presence on him as a person. So the Lord bless you. We love you. We are praying for all of our shofar congregations. And we want to just say that we are so proud to be part of this church family, so proud to be part of the body of Christ. It is a victorious, beautiful creation by God. Let me pray for us. God, thank you that you are God. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to love you with all of our hearts. And we thank you for this invitation, Lord, to return to that place, Lord, of quieting our hearts and surrendering to you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that your plans towards us are good plans, Lord. Lord, your plans are to give us a hope in the future, even, Lord God, when things look uncertain and things are being shaken around us. And Lord, we Thank you that you will fulfill your promises towards each one of us. We plead your blood of each one of our congregation members and our loved ones. And we thank you, Jesus, that none of us, Lord, during this time will lose hope. And all of us, Lord, will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord bless you. Bye-bye.